since this is a water-cooled spindle, we need to ensure that before we run it, we give it access to some water. On this video, we're going to take a look at how to connect the tubing that came included on the kit, which is basically a 5mm ID, 8mm OD tubing made of PVC. So the first step is going to be to remove the protective rubbers. Of course, we don't need that. And remove the nuts. And something that I read out there was that you could use heat to uh, make it easier to put this tubing into the nozzle. So heat makes it easier. But as you can see, uh, you're going to have to be patient with it. It takes a little while. The other thing that I read was that you could use soap. So soapy water. Now, it turns out that the PVC tubing that came with the kit was not long enough. So I had to use some of my polyurethane tubing. Man, this guy is not, is, is not behaving. Definitely, the soapy water is not doing the trick. And in fact, <laughs> it, this, this was so hard that eventually I knocked out my first connection, as you will see here in a little bit. Bam! All of this worked for nothing. That's because, of course, I have forgotten to put the nut first, which, mind you, that's probably the first thing you should do. Put the nut, otherwise you're going to have to go all the way through on the, on the other side of the tubing. So, uh, put, put the nut first. Now, the soapy water works way better with the PVC tubing. So, if you have PVC tubing, you can use the soapy water. That That's okay. Of course, once you're done, don't forget to... Uh, <laughs> to push that nut in really, really well. One thing that you really don't want is a leak. Water cooling is kind of scary because, you know, if something fails, you're going to you're gonna create a mess. Again, put the nut first. Don't forget that step. Don't make the same mistake I did. So some more soapy water here. I'm going to try again. Somehow I have this obnoxious belief that I can get this done. I'm, I'm being obstinate here, to be honest. At, at the end of the day, I learned uh, I think you would need like elephant soap to make this work. So I gave up, came back with the heat, and I would say if you're going to do polyurethane tubing, don't waste your time with the soapy water. Just go right at the heat and make it work. Uh, and make sure that the, that the nut is as close as possible to the nipple because man that was tough to move i don't know why i'm thinking this polyurethane is not eight millimeter od it's probably an english and imperial measurement and that's why it didn't work all right so we're going to use some grow mats to feed our tubing into the water reservoir and these are i believe three eighth grow mats but the tubing is too uh too thin as compared to the inner diameter on the on the uh, grommet so what i figured was well this rubber you can always push this guy according to which hole you make and in here you can see that i made some experiments with some cheat metal and three different sizes and for the pvc the one that worked the best was the the hole that was made with a 3 8 drill you want a a, a nug a snug fit my reasoning here is we don't want any junk falling into the water reservoir, right? Uh, so here I am with the polyurethane. Obviously, the diameter is different because this guy is just going at different rates through the different holes. Uh, it just becomes way harder to, to push. So my impression is the outer diameter on this guy is much more. I didn't measure it. I, I mean, it's so simple to measure. I just put the number here after I measured it. But obviously... The 3 8 is like incredibly hard to go through. So that's probably not what I'm going to use for the polyurethane. And listen, this is no science here. Uh, this is no science here. Just make a few holes with your drill. Once you have chosen the drill size that you want to use. And then um, apply the grommet through. There's going to be a little corner that is not, it's not going to want to go through. So just get a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver. I'm pushing it in. This is rubber. It's incredibly malleable. It's not going to break. Um, I think you would need to uh, chippy hammer it into submission if you wanted to break it. So you have a lot of leeway here. 
and then of course just pu uh, push the tubing through the grommets and you're gonna repeat this step for uh, for both grommets you want to have enough tubing to go to the bottom of the barrel this is a five gallon pail you know I get this uh, free from uh, Harbor Freight all, uh, all the time now if you recall the kit also included a submersible water pump and that's just a conventional water pump that you use for uh, for your fish tanks and I don't know stuff like that I guess for your for your coolant on your CNC router spindle now there were no instructions and um, this is the nipple that is gonna take the tubing I'm just putting some Teflon do you need it I have no idea should you do it should you do not do it I have no idea all I can tell you is the planet has not exploded so I'm thinking it's okay um, just you know it's up to you all of this is gonna be submerged so my impression is that it really doesn't matter a whole lot because you know what leak are you gonna get everything is gonna be underwater anyway um, then you're gonna apply the suction cups probably a good idea to go with this because I'm thinking this thing is gonna vibrate a lot the suction cups are incredibly nice and then once you have it all set just connect the tubing into the nipple I, I'm not showing this in here but I had to use uh, the heat procedure um, to get that done here's uh, the, the last detail however this uh, five gallon pail doesn't have any area to let the power core go through so this is a good project for your Dremel just go to town and create a groove so that the cable can uh, access or I, I should say go into the outside uh, wear a respirator lots of incredibly nasty dust um, coming out of this um, and then eventually you're gonna go you're gonna play with this until you get the, the cavity that you're looking for the idea here is to be able to close this as good as possible in the event that this thing falls to the ground and you, you don't want to create a mess of water on your floor I mean it's just water but uh, either way it's better to not spill this uh, if you're in their shop uh, it's just so, it's better to avoid so here I'm putting the, the submersible pump inside I already have some water but something I noticed you will want to fill this up to the point where everything is completely sub submerged or you're gonna get some bubbles I gotta be honest with you I have no idea what happens if there are bubbles my impression is the router is not gonna catch fire because there were a few bubbles but at the same time I rather have this suddenly submerged so there is always water but how are we gonna connect this to the power line allow me to recommend the PC 100A AC power center and here is my reasoning so you have your water pump are you gonna be plugging it to the wall every time you need it that's too much work no 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 what you want is to have a switchboard like this guy it has eight independent inputs or I should say eight independent power outputs with eight respective switches so now you can have your loads and turn them on and off independently you're gonna have a bunch of stuff connected to your CNC router you're gonna have your your pump your uh, dust collector you're gonna have maybe a vacuum pump so at least you're gonna need three loads all right so here we're plugging in the pump it took a little while but eventually it got in we flip the switch and whammo we have water flow you're gonna get some bubbles so you will want to let this guy run until you have um you know no bubbles and at that point in time you can run your router if everything is working fine of course you're gonna see water flow at the end all right youtubers we have successfully connected the water supply into our spindle so this is a success i want to thank you for tuning to my youtube channel and i'm gonna see you on the next one